our aim when we take any measurements is to get the most accurate and most precise measurements that we can. So that means we want to reduce systematic error and systematic uncertainty and also random uncertainty. So when you're designing an experiment or carrying out an experiment, what you need to think about are some ways that you can take those measurements to minimize any of these effects. A really good thing to think about when you're designing your experiment and when you're um, writing a report to describe what you did is to think about, analyze what you did, how did you take the measurement, so what you did, and why you did it. So particularly, what was the problem you were trying to minimize and explain why that problem occurs. So I've got five examples in the next few slides to try and give you some, um, some ideas for how to write these things down and how to structure your thinking. So the first key one is parallax error, and you've probably heard about this before. So here's a scale, and uh, here is someone's eye in different positions, and here's the pointer on the scale. So that might be, say, looking at a voltmeter, um, from above, and you notice that there's a distance between the pointer and the scale itself. So depending on where the eye is, it'll see that pointer line up with either something straight below it, if it's right above, or something over to the side, if the eye is over the side. So when we talk about parallax error, we want to look at the scale um, at eye level, or have the scale at eye level, and we want to do that because we want to minimize the parallax error. So it could be random or systematic, depending on whether you're consistently to one side or not. And that parallax error is caused by the distance between the pointer and the scale. That's something you might write down when you were um, describing what you did for this technique to reduce systematic and random error. The second thing we've talked about before is taking repeated readings. So for anything that has random error, um, it's always good to take repeated readings. You are um, going to expose then uh, truly what the variability in those readings are. Then you can average them and get an estimate for how certain you are about that, those measurements. So what you did, you took repeated readings and you averaged the values. And why you did it, it was to adjust for or to compensate for um, the random error in those readings, which may have been caused, in the case of some timing something, caused by variations in the reaction time of the person timing. The next example um, is a zero reading. We've got an example up there of a ruler and how there's that little bit at the end of the ruler. So you've got to make sure that um, whenever you um, take a measurement with a ruler that you uh, take that into account. So if you have to put it right up against the floor, say to measure the height of something, you need to um, basically add that little height in. So what you did, you um, when you were taking these measurements, you took a zero reading and subtracted that from the actual reading. Now, of course, for a ruler in the example that I've given you here, this zero reading here is actually negative. So you're actually subtracting a negative value, so you're actually adding that value to the final, final result. Why do you do that? It's to reduce systematic error because it will consistently push things to one direction and it's caused by a non-zero reading, oh, in this example that I've given here, um, by no mass on the scales. So it could be for a, a, a measurement with a ruler or it could be, um, let's say, measuring the mass of something. And, and zero readings uh, are, come up all the time, so they're really good to keep an eye on. One other thing you can do if you've got uh, something that you can measure over and over again, or you've got lots of something to measure, um, for example, timing um, something that's cyclic. So you could measure the time for 10 swings of the pendulum instead of one. And that, uh, why you did it was to reduce the impact of random error caused by variations in the human reaction time. You could also add in there that um, perhaps it is uh, difficult to measure uh, 
one swing because it's very short. Um, there's no reason why this needs to be all you write, um, but it's good to demonstrate that you understand why you're doing uh, using a particular technique in your measurements. And the last um, idea that uh, I have here, the last of the five, is the choice of scale. So if you're measuring, um, say, a voltage which is about one volt, you'd like to go and choose a voltmeter that goes between zero and two volts rather than one that goes between zero and 20 volts. So that's what I've written there. And why do we do that? Well, the convoluted way of saying it, as I realized when, realized when I was writing it, was to reduce the impact of random error. And that was caused by measuring a small number on an unnecessarily large scale. I'm not really happy with that explanation. I'd probably prefer to see just to allow a more precise reading to be taken. You could go into, um, uh, if you were really asked to demonstrate why you were choosing a particular thing, um, about how, perhaps what, what uh, level of uncertainty you would have gotten with the 20 volt scale versus the 2 volt scale. So that's just some ideas. Um, I've also included a document which summarizes a whole bunch of different um, examples for techniques that you might be able to use for diff taking different types of measurements because each measurement will have or each experiment will have multiple um, different techniques that you use to improve your precision and accuracy. These are just some examples.